Hello and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Jeff Rasmussen, your host, broadcasting to you live from Middleton, Idaho. Today we have My Heritage's Daniel Horowitz, who is with us live at My Heritage headquarters for his class, Latest Updates to My Heritage Genetic Groups. Thanks to Daniel and thanks to the more than 1,500 of you for registering for today's live webinar. So wherever and whenever you are, glad to have you with us. When My Heritage released Deep Nostalgia at the end of February this year, they knew their users would be enthralled, but they never dreamed it would become this much of a sensation. This week, My Heritage celebrates another unimaginable milestone, 80 million animations have been created on my heritage using deep nostalgia so uh, give it a try with your photos up at myheritage.com and now it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker daniel horowitz daniel is a genealogy expert at my heritage providing key contributions liaising with genealogy societies bloggers and media as well as lecturing and attending conferences around the world Dedicated to genealogy since 1986, he was the teacher and the study guide editor of the Family History Project Searching for My Roots in Venezuela for 15 years. Daniel is involved in several crowdsource digitization and transcription projects and holds a board-level position at the Israel Genealogy Research Association. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give Daniel Horowitz a nice warm webinar welcome. Hi, Daniel, and welcome to the webinar. Hi, Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, it's always a pleasure for me to be able to be here with you and all your audience uh, sharing the knowledge and the new things that my heritage have for everybody. And today I'm going to show you, and by you, it's not only you, Jeff, is everybody, <laughs> what is new coming to my heritage regarding genetic groups. Uh, but first, give me one second. Yes, because uh, definitely I need to get you this picture of me, which is uh, a little bit more uh, updated, I would say. <clears throat> so I can uh, skip this and start right from the beginning, because uh, if we will jump, I don't know uh, how many people know about genetic groups and DNA and how my heritage managed that. So if you allow me, I'm going to start from the very beginning and that it starts in the body of uh, everyone of us in the very nucleus of the cell where we all have these chromosomes. And the chromosomes is actually what we normally call DNA. Those chromosomes are actually 24 pairs of genetic material that tells our body how to act, how to interact, and what to do, what not to do, what to have, what not to have. So uh, if you are a very nice hair, uh, you can blame it on your DNA. Um, but also, unfortunately, uh, also any he health problems that you may have. Now, from all those 24, uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes, my heritage looks into 22. And that is very important for me to establish since the very beginning, because one pair is dedicated to the gender. One pair, it's the one in charge of saying you are male or you are a female, at least biologically speaking. So my heritage doesn't look into that pair. My heritage looks into the 22 other pairs of chromosomes and also not necessarily to all the areas in the uh, DNA. My heritage is looking into DNA since 2016. So yeah, that's not that many years, but uh, the fact that we came a little bit late to the party allowed us to come bigger and better especially with our technology and our tools. We have thousands of people tested every day. Most of them are buying a MyHeritage DNA kit. And I'm not from the sales department, I'm a genealogist, but I can tell you that sometimes we have very good deals on DNA. But if you have tech 
taken a test with another company, I have very good news for you because uploads to my heritage are more than welcome. But let me maybe go a little bit back in history and let you know that my heritage actually started as a platform to build family trees. And today we have 79 million of those in our system. Then we came to the historical records uh, area and today we have 13.3 billion of those from all over the world. And the third part is, is of course the DNA where we have 4.8 million of DNA kids all of them are getting matches between themselves. So when you have a DNA kit on MyHeritage, you're gonna get is the matches with other people, but also the genetic groups. And this is associated to the ethnicity estimation. And MyHeritage has a little bit more than 2,100 genetic groups. I will show you all of them in a few minutes. But also very important is the language capability that MyHeritage has, supporting and being available in 42 languages. So it doesn't matter what language you or your relative speaks and talks and reads and writes, MyHeritage has a way to support that and to actually allow you to do genealogy in that language. And this is definitely one of the things that makes us different from other companies out there. We also have some superior technology. We try to be friendly and approachable. We have exclusive databases, but not only that, we also have the easiest way to collect DNA. It's a cheek swap. You receive in your DNA kit uh, two sticks like Q-tips uh, and you just rub your inner cheek for 30 seconds. You put the, um, the, the rubbing part, the, the, the end of the stick in a small container and that is what you send to the lab. Well, after all, it is quite difficult uh, to start spitting and to filling those cups and we don't want you to spill or, or spit in anything or anybody, uh, especially if you have older people that needs to take a DNA test, um, the cheek swab is definitely the best way to go. Now, um, I was telling you about the 22 pairs of chromosomes and how we all share all that and that is also very important to emphasize that my heritage type of DNA test is what we called autosomal, meaning that we looked into all that DNA not on the X and the Y chromosomes. Now, the important for, of that is that that DNA is coming from generation to generation from up to 10 generations back. So you are carrying in your DNA a little sample of every and any of your biological ancestors. So this is definitely the best way of, or the best DNA test type that you can get. Now, remember I said you can take a DNA test with MyHeritage whenever you want, but I also said that if you have done an autosomal DNA test with any of these other companies, MyHeritage will allow you to upload your digital results that you should be able to download with no problem from any of those uh, companies out there and receive everything and uh, what I am going to show you today, which are the benefits of the mm, DNA test. Now, I would like to explain you a little bit more in deep how the DNA is transmitted from your ancestors until you. Uh, remember, I saw, I show you the uh, chart with that autosomal and told you that you have DNA from all your family members, but the, the farther back in your family tree, the less DNA you will have. 
So let's start from the beginning. You. You have 50% of your DNA from your father and 50% DNA from your mother. Remember again the 22 pairs of chromosomes? Well, they are in pairs because one of those components of the pair came from your father and the other one came from your mother. And this will be the same ratio that you have when you go back into your family tree, meaning that half of your father's DNA is from a grandfather and the other half is from your grandmother. And this is the same applicable for the mother. So you actually have 25% of DNA from each of your four grandparents. And if I go one step back, you have about 12.5% of each of your eight great grandparents. Now, you will also share the same 12.5% of DNA with your first cousin or with your great niece or great nephew. So this is also very important to try to define and understand the relationship between you and the other matches. Because whenever you have a match that it will be around 3%, it means that the person could could be either your first cousin twice removed or your second cousin. And you will need to analyze this in order to understand who this person may be. And remember, it can come from any of those ancestral branches of your family. Very important to mention at this point that that 3.13% is not exact. And that is why I have that sign before the number, meaning more or less, approximately. And this will also be the same ratio uh, if you have heard the word centimorgans. Uh, some people would like to uh, or prefer to refer to DNA uh, component in the measure of centimorgans. Um, it's exactly the same. I just find easier to talk about percentages. Now, on the MyHeritage DNA page, uh, you will see that we will offer you the ethnicity estimate and the DNA matches. And today, I want to concentrate, at least for the beginning of the presentation, in the ethnicity estimate, meaning that taking your DNA in consideration and, an, and uh, performing an analysis, we are able to tell you where your ancestors came from different parts of the world. You can view that either from the overview page or the ethnicity estimate uh, option in the DNA menu right there. So let me go into the ethnicity estimate part and explain you a little bit more about how you get these percentages and how we can tell you from where in the world you are and your ancestor came. And I'm going to do that with an example of a friend of mine. His name is Mike, and Mike has a mom, and he has also a pair of grandparents and four great-grandparents. Now, Mike, from the mother's side, the great-grandparents are all coming from Purple Land. That means that all the DNA from the grandparents that they inherited from the parents are also 100% purple, meaning that Mike's mom is 100% purple as well. So now we can all be sure that Mike as well is 50% purple. Why 50? Well, remember I said you get 50% from your mother and 50% from your father. Mike's mom got the DNA from their parents, but they were both from the same country or the same area. So all her DNA is purple. Now, Mike also have a dad and also have grandparents and great-grandparents from the dad's side. Here... Mike's life is a little bit more colorful because two of uh, his great-grandparents from the paternal side are coming from the Yellow County. 
one is coming from red country and the other one is coming from blue country. Now, that means that the grandparents will be half blue and half red, at least uh, Mike's uh, uh, grandfather. And the grandmother is 100% yellow because her parents were 100% yellow as well. Meaning that uh, Mike's dad is half red, half blue, I'm sorry, a quarter red, a quarter blue, and half yellow. Once we understand that, it's totally understandable as well how Mike is only 25% yellow, 12.5% blue, and 12.5% red. And remember, this is more or less, okay? And I am basing this all in the perfect theory of how DNA is transmitted. Now, if I will change colors by ethnicities, I can say that Mike is 50% Ashkenazi Jew, 25% uh, Iberian, 12.7% Scandinavian, and 12% Native American. Quite a mix for a person. Now, how my heritage can be sure which countries that DNA belongs to? Very easy, actually. My heritage, remember, started with family trees. So we handpicked about 5,000 of our own users that have good sourced and researched family trees with at least four generations in the same region. And we ask for their DNA to use as a sample. This is what I call the ruler. And when we compare your DNA to that DNA, the more it resembles, it means that more percentage-wise you are from that area. This is also what my good friend Judy Russell uh, calls reference population, okay? It's a group of people that we know their DNA is coming from the same ethnic origins. Now, uh, this is the way my heritage will present the ethnicity estimation. This is uh, a little bit of the new design that we recently uh, revealed, and I would like to go over it step by step so you can understand all what you have here. And let me tell you from the beginning, there are a few things that you have hidden in here. They're not Easter eggs. They're just things that we uh, hid just for your use. Let me show you. Let's start from the top left part. Your ethnicity results and your genetic groups can be sorted by genetic, uh, but confidence level. And you can click over there and you can read more about this confidence level. And of course that we cannot tell you 100% everything uh, that we're telling you because uh, there's always a percentage of um, errors in the different uh, signs. So uh, in here, you can decide if you want to show the highest uh, confidence level or the everything, including the lower one. In my case, I am 88% Ashkenazi Jew. Now, probably some of you already have heard this. I didn't have to do a DNA test in order to know this. I, I knew it. I do my research. I know that I'm an Ashkenazi Jew. Nothing I can do about it. But if you don't know, and suddenly you have an ethnicity that surprises you, just by clicking on that name, you will be able to learn more about this ethnicity. You will see over there your genetic groups, but hold on one second. I don't want to go into that resolution before I explain about the ethnicity itself. Uh, if you scroll down, you can learn about the ethnicity. You can actually hear a song that we have prepared for you. You can read and learn more about that specific ethnicity. And here is where my heritage uh, mix and match your DNA matches with your ethnicities. And this is quite very important. From here, 
you will be able to see those DNA matches that shares that ethnicity with you, okay? And of course, if you have less than 88%, uh, like I have in other ethnicities, it is quite important to be able to see the matches that shares that ethnicity because it means that it will be easier to find out how you are related to those people because probably you are related through one and only one branch of all your family tree. Now, I'm going back. Uh, if you didn't notice, uh, I have an arrow right here that will take me back to the um, ethnicity page. And here, you will be able to see under each of your ethnicities, your genetic groups. Now, because I'm 88% Ashkenazi Jew, uh, most of my ethnicities or all my, I'm sorry, my um, genetic groups are located under this ethnicity. For you, it may change. You may have some genetic groups for the different ethnicities that we show you. And um, you can see that I'm uh, selecting to show the five ethnicity and the five genetic groups that uh, my heritage assigned me. But you can also see in the name of the countries that those genetic groups include that they're more or less in the same areas. Now, this again, it's my own case with the Ashkenazi Jews because we are all coming from the same area. Uh, so the areas and the countries overlap one with the other. And still, my heritage is able to define different groups, although the ethnicity is the same. I'm pretty sure that if you have Greek or Irish or even uh, Iberian uh, DNA ethnicity, um, we will be able to show you a different areas. And I will show you, as I promise, all the areas in a minute. But first, let's go to this one. And I know how to go to this one because, again, I am researching my family for many, many years. I do know they're coming from Ukraine and Romania more than Poland and Russia. So those uh, two countries are only in this uh, genetic group. And I can see that genetic group right there. And my heritage changed the map that I was seeing here, but also the left panel with information. First of all, information about this genetic group. And here is where I'm going to explain to you how we came out with those groups. You already know that we compare your DNA with the founder's population. But now we took also the information from their family trees and we compare that to the DNA that you have. And we analyze everything together. So I can see here that by the time I took this image at least, we had about 4,000 DNA kits identified, not with Ashkenazi Jew, but with this exact group, meaning that all of them are sharing more DNA than the other groups, but also, 1,800 family trees were saying that the people who have this DNA also had events in those countries. More than that, we can tell the top places and the common surnames and the common given names appearing in those family trees. No worries, we are not revealing any personal information. We only took the information from the family trees for statistic purposes. And of course, that you can click there and you can see more information about the statistics that we are showing you. Now, you will notice that below the map, you have a timeline. Right now, we are seeing the span between the 1900s and the 1950s. Every uh, space in that timeline takes 50 years in time, which is more or less two generations. And you will notice down there, this is kind of uh, things that not everybody uh, realized, that you have a play 
timeline animation, meaning that we will be moving the timeline for you and showing you on the left side the places and names according to that timeline. But on the map, you will see also how the people with that type of DNA are located in the world. Now, this is, of course, not everybody with that ethnicity or that genetic group in the world. We're talking about MyHeritage users with DNA. And this will also prove you that MyHeritage really has DNA from all over the world. So this is the migration path that Ashkenazi Jews coming from Poland, Ukraine, Russia, and Romania had during all the years of their life. If I keep going down, uh, you will be able to see also the common ethnicities from this group and the related groups, the other groups that shares DNA with this genetic group that I'm showing you. Now back again to the main page of the ethnicity. I would like you to I would like to point out to you the all the genetic genetic groups that we have in all the available regions. So if you click down there on the left panel, you will be able to see all the areas that we have and the different groups that we have for each of those areas. And actually, this is a very good way to teach kids not only geography, but history and all kind of good things. Because I can come here with my daughter and I can show her uh, about the Finnish DNA and the different countries where they are and how they moved. And I will be able to see everything uh, that I show you for your ethnicity. You will be able to see it for the rest of the groups as well. And uh, of course, uh, those are divided into the different, um, uh, ah, not countries, uh, but uh, continents. Uh, yes, thank you, continents. And uh, you have over there Africa, America, Asia, Middle East, and different regions. Okay, let's go back to the results because I want to show you a little bit more of what we have for you. In the menu, you see those circles that, or, or areas, more or less circles, um, that we draw into the map. Those are the genetic groups. And you can hover your mouse over them and you can see and click those groups from there as well. The other thing you can do is you can go over the other colors areas that you have and we will show you the ethnicities matching the areas of the world where we have found it. So Greek is not only Greek, is also a little bit of Southern Italy and uh, South Bulgaria and other countries in the region. Remember, people moved, okay? So people lived all over and we cannot set one ethnicity to a specific country, even if we would like to. Uh, what else you can see here? On the upper right corner, you have a series of icons. So one of the icons that you have over there is the shared icon. And this actually, I used it a lot when I received my results of the DNA uh, because I love Twitter and I was able to share this chart and my ethnicity or this graph and my ethnicity through Twitter. I also did that through Facebook and I uh, brag a little bit about my ethnicities uh, with all my families and my friends over there. I also see there a printer icon and this allowed you actually to generate a PDF and uh, you can either print it or send it by email and brag yourself with everybody else and tell them, hey, I told you so. Now, before I jump to the other one, uh, one more thing I would like to point out here is the play button, the arrow over there in the circle. This actually triggers a very nice movie 
or animation that we have created for you with music and the different areas of your ethnicity estimation. So I will invite all of you to click over there and see it. Now on the lower part, I'm still in the right as you can see, you have another set of icons and here you can uh, zoom in and zoom out the world map and you can also see uh, the map in a different configuration, but this is definitely the best feature, at least I think so, that the ethnicity estimates map will show you. The first icon over there will allow you to turn on your family events from your family tree into your DNA. This is what is going to prove you once and for all that your research is actually accurate. I'm gonna turn mine just for you to see how all the pins are actually in the Europe area, right between Romania and Ukraine. So you can see that even the genetic groups was quite accurate, except for, of course, the birth of my mother that happened in Rome, that has nothing to do with my genetic origins and another couple of events that you can see over there happening in Israel where I am living since 2005. Now, when I go and I click on any of those pins, I will be able to see what events in my family happened right there. And you will notice that my grandfather, great-grandparents, even great-great-grandparents had lived, married, and born, died in the same area. And that is actually what we're talking about. Not my mother in Italy or my father in Trinidad. Yeah, don't ask. Uh, but the origins of my DNA going back up to 10 generations is all concentrated back into the Ashkenazi Jews from those countries. Now, uh, I do know that a lot of people ask why, if, if this is how you explain it so good, why my ancestor origins are actually not reflected in my ethnicities. And this could happen. Let me show you how. Let's say that we have a person that it's half blue and half purple. And that person marriage with another 100% yellow. You're already used to colors in my explanations. And you already know that the kid that will generate this couple will be half percent yellow and like coming half percent from one uh, parent and the other half percent from the other parent. What is the problem here? That not necessarily the DNA is passed 50% exactly. You see that the person was 50% blue and 50% uh, purple, the parent at least. And you will expect me to say that the son or the, or the, the kid is 25% purple and 25% blue. But that may not be the case. The, the kid could have 30% purple and 20% blue. And then that person is going to marry it again. And just to make things easier, I'm going to go with a 100% gray person. And the descendants is going to take, for example, 33% uh, yellow, which is a little bit more than the 50% yellow that the parent had. Uh, only 17% uh, blue, which again is more than uh, the half of the... 20% that the father had, and that is all what he's getting from the father. Again, he's taking 50% of the DNA from the father, but he's not taking 50% of each of the ethnicities that the parents had. In the other hand, of course, he, uh, he or she got 50% of green because the other person was 100% green if there is such a thing with ethnicities. And look what happened with the purple. It simply disappeared. Well, that doesn't mean that that grandkid is not sharing or having the same origins as the grandfather who was 50% purple. It simply 
shows that the grandkid got no purple on his DNA. But again, don't get confused. He still has 25% of the grandparent DNA, okay? I hope this clear up the air a little bit and not confuse you more. Now, let me go back to the overview page because here you will also be able to see your DNA matches. And again, if you ask me, the only good reason to do a DNA test is for the matches. But if I keep scrolling down, my heritage will tell me the location of those matches, and that may be helpful as well. But if I keep scrolling, my heritage will tell me the ethnicities of those matches that I have. Now, why is this so important? Remember, I had, uh, and you can see, 11 thousand matches sharing my Ashkenazi Jewishness, but only a thousand sharing my Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. So if I would like to go over and understand how I became uh, with this 1.8% of Irish, Scottish, and Welsh, probably I want to view only those 1,300 uh, matches. And by going to this uh, screen and clicking over there, I will be able to see my matches filtered by these ethnicities. Talking about matches, let me go into the DNA matches because, and yes, I know I promise you the new things on the genetic groups, and here are they. Let me explain you first what you are looking at. This is a sample of one of my DNA matches. You will see that, uh, of course, you will have more than three DNA matches. This is a mock-up from a PowerPoint that I built. And in here, you will be able to see the filters and you can filter by theory of family relativity or if you have smart matches or share places or all kinds of things related to the family tree. That is, that is why it's so important to have a family tree together with your DNA. You will be able also to view your matches by relationship, if it's close family, extended family, or more distant family, by the location, same as I showed you before, and also by the ethnicities, okay? Now, here is where comes the new thing, and you are not able to see this, so you are seeing this as a scoop of what very soon you will be able to do on your DNA matches. Because it's not enough to say, okay, bring me all my gazillion of Ashkenazi Jews. I want to be able to say, I want to see my matches by the genetic group that I am sharing. And this is what my heritage is adding. The possibility to filter your matches by genetic group. <clears throat> Meaning that I will be able to open that drop down menu. I will be able to see all the genetic groups that I have right there. And I will be able either to type uh, a title or, or a, a country, in this case, Bulgaria, for example, and see all the genetic groups that includes Bulgaria. Or I can go with uh, Oslo, for example, and we will know if that Oslo, which is not a country, is only a city, belongs to a specific genetic group. And then you will be able to select what genetic groups you want to see and you will see the matches that you have in that specific genetic group. So this is how my heritage is helping you to fine tune your matches and your results to be able to find out how you are related to those people. So I hope uh, that this actually uh, excites you as much as it does to me, uh, I have to admit, I just started to play with this feature and it's quite nice and quite accurate as well. 
Uh, if Jeff allows me just uh, one second, I would like to bring you a couple of announcements, and I do know that Jeff has more for you in a few minutes. First of all, I don't want to say goodbye before letting you know about the knowledge base, the place where we post uh, webinars, articles, downloaded material, and all the things that you can use to learn how to be both a better genealogist and a better MyHeritage user. You don't need even to register to this. You can just visit it, education.myheritage.com, and start using it for free. And talking about webinars, uh, yes, if you are here today, you already know about the Legacy Family Tree Webinars series that we have here on, uh, on FamilyTreeWebinars.com. We have the MyHeritage series. We have other webinars that Jeff does during the whole week. Uh, you can watch them live or recorded for free or under a subscription. I would like to invite you all as well to come every Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, that's New York time, no matter where in the world you are, to a 30-minute session where I, every week, I bring a different subject, either preferably new things that are coming to my heritage, and then I open the microphone and I start answering your questions. And I do know that you already have questions here and very fast I'm going to move to that part because I want to answer those questions as well. So Jeff, this is all that I have for today. Not before I thank you all for your interest and your attention. And thank you, Daniel. Very uh, well. The comments that uh, are coming in are are ones saying that Daniel just knows how to how to make this easy for us to understand. And uh, so, thank you, Daniel. Um, yeah, we've got some questions. I'm, I'm very glad. I'm very glad that that is the comment, and not <laughs> Daniel just left me more confused than at the beginning. <laughs> Well, uh, Daniel, let's. Uh, I, I do have some uh, announcements and door prizes, but let's uh, let's do questions first today. Uh, Christine says, uh, "Will she's asking about uh, how often are the genetic groups updated? Uh, are is is what uh, are the groups that we have right now? Is is that how it will be continually, or are there new advances in that? And and how often does that happen?" That's a very good question. Um, for now, they have not changed uh, because we released those genetic groups quite recently. They will change. And, and yes, that's, that's totally true because the more DNA kits that we have in our database together with more family trees will allow us to be more accurate. And probably uh, we will put you today on a particular group. And in a few months when we release and we are planning to release an update, both on the ethnicity estimation and the genetic groups, probably we will move you a little bit uh, into mm, close by countries. Uh, once we have again uh, a bigger uh, founder population, a bigger database. We're increasing it all the time and, and applying these uh, algorithms every time from scratch to make sure that it's as accurate as we can have it. Okay. Thanks so much, Daniel. Uh, another one of the questions has to do with with uh, transferring your, your DNA results into my heritage. Stephen is wondering, are there any risks of doing that or, uh, or any advantages of of transferring or importing your DNA results from another provider? Uh, well, definitely you have advantages because um, you will have another pool of people that you will be compared to. And uh, you will get different matches that you may not get in the other platforms. Uh, risk? No. There is, there is no risk, nothing different than having your DNA any other place. Uh, in, on the contrary, I think that 
it, it's only positive that you have your DNA in as many places that you want. It's, it's like having your family tree in as many places as you want uh, or you can uh, because you have more chances, again, to get uh, matches. I know a lot of our success stories uh, are based actually in uploaded uh, DNA from other companies and people didn't got the matches in the other companies. They got it on my heritage. Thank you, Daniel. Let's go to Bert, who says, what is the definition of medium confidence or low confidence? Uh, Bert noticed that on the match pages. What, what's the confidence based on? Uh, the confidence is based on how many DNAs and family trees we have to compare your DNA. Uh, because let's say that we only have, and we don't, okay, but uh, if we have uh, only 10 people from Korea and uh, your DNA seems very little similar to a Korean, uh, we may say, well, you know, you're 1% Korean. Uh, but then more Korean people tested and we have uh, more DNA from Korea and, and that will be a low confidence. But when we have more, we realize that your DNA really didn't look as uh, Korean as we thought at the beginning. And, and then we will not show you the Korean uh, a, a genetic group. In my case, the, the Ashkenazi, you saw that it was a very high confidence because the amount of DNA that we had to compare with my DNA. Okay, thanks, Daniel. Let's go to Cynthia, who says, I have 1.3% Ashkenazi Jew, but I feel it comes from both sides of the family. Is there a way to know which side of the family it comes from? Um, no. Well, the only way will be to analyze again, these common matches that you have under that ethnicity group and taking into account that Ashkenazi Jew is one of the ethnicities that has a lot of endogamy, meaning that people intermarried one with the other. Definitely not the only group, okay? And uh, in another lectures, I put the example of Hawaiian people, like, where do you want Hawaiian people to go to marry it like a hundred years ago? They were in an island. They, they intermarried one with the other. But if you take all the matches that you have with that ethnicity and you look into your common matches, and if they, for example, in that list of common matches, you have a, a cousin or a mother, a father or, or somebody else, coming from a specific branch of the family, you will be able to pinpoint the branch which gives you that ethnicity. And yes, it could be more than one branch at the time. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> more questions about uploading from other sites. Uh, Shirley says, mm -hmm. Shirley's asking about what is the cost to do so and what do you get with a potential cost? Good, so the cost is free. Uh, you can upload for free and you will be able to see what MyHeritage offers you. Uh, half or, or part of the features that we have for DNA uh, will be limited. And then you have two options. Either have a complete plan uh, on MyHeritage and then you can just view everything with no problem. Or you can pay a one-time fee per DNA kit and unlock all the features for that kit. If I'm not mistaken, uh, to mention a few, the ethnicity estimations actually, uh, the common DNA matches, and I think that the pedigree view, if I'm not mistaken, are part of those locked uh, features on the DNA. But if you upload more than, I think it's three or four DNA kits, I will suggest you to go with the complete uh, package because then you will get everything and you will, the, the amount for unlocking those four specific DNA kits will be more or less the same as just getting a complete subscription. Yep, okay. 
Appreciate that. Deborah says, I don't see this new all genetic groups when she looks at her account. Is this is it coming later? Oh, yes, Deborah. Just because you were here, you saw the future. <laughs> I said that I was giving you a <laughs> scoop. Uh, but this should be released. Uh, well, let me put names to the people. Actually, Ran promised me that it was going to be by the end of this week. But, oh. but telling the truth is it doesn't only uh, depends on RAN. It depends on a lot of other people. So very soon you will be able to see that in your DNA matches. You're totally right. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Dale says, uh, I have a full membership with my own tree. I'll be managing my husband's kit also. Will I be able to put his separate tree on my heritage also? Uh, yes, you can put um, as many family trees as you want, uh, and you can manage uh, all those trees in uh, the DNA kits in one account without any problem. Okay. Thanks. Uh, you're doing great, Daniel. I'm throwing all kinds of questions your way. Uh, let's go to Elizabeth, who says uh, she did DNA testing about 20 years ago. She's wondering, would those results be 100% valid today, or has the analysis improved since then? Uh, well, that's a tricky question. The analysis <laughs> has improved, but the DNA is the same or should be the same. The DNA didn't change since 20 years or, or since she was born. Now, um, again, Definitely was not with my heritage because we were not having DNA since 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, but in, in whatever company you have your DNA since 20 years ago, every time that they uh, update the technology, they should update your results as well. I do know that uh, we did it once and, and other companies have done it a couple of times since uh, all this uh, DNA for genealogy started. And, and you see in your DNA results different and new things as the technology improve. And you will keep seeing more new things as the technology keeps improving. Thanks for that, Daniel. Uh, just a few more minutes here, looks like. Uh, we've got Linda who asks, if I upload my DNA, do I get anything extra for getting a complete membership? versus just paying the unlock fee for the DNA? Oh, definitely. You get uh, access to all the matches that your family tree will get. You will be able to contact other uh, users that have matches with you. Uh, you will get also access to the 13.3 billion historical records that we have, uh, record matches, Yep, and preferred support as well. Okay, thanks. Now, a bunch of questions are coming in uh, uh, similar to this, uh, where where the user has uh, a DNA kit on on more than one other site. Is it worth it to upload uh, all of those kits, or is there one that's preferred over another? Uh, is what what kind of guidance would you give us? What? We're, we're talking about the same person's DNA? Yeah, the same person's DNA, but found <clears throat> as found on, on, other, on, on okay. more than one other site. Okay. Um, well, first of all, one kid will be more than enough. Okay? But uh, it doesn't hurt to have more than one uploaded there. And let me explain you why. Although all these companies, uh, we are working with autosomal DNA, not all the companies look at all the pieces or all the parts in the chromosome. Okay. Now, the difference, the difference is also not big, is, is like 1%. So the only thing that will benefit is if you if you upload two different companies, we will be able like to merge the information and, and to have it like a more complete sample. But even with one company, that will be enough to get you accurate matches and genetic groups as well. 
Okay, thank you. Daniel, with with all of the dozens and dozens of additional questions here that we won't have time for today, uh, when we when our viewers do have other questions, uh, where would you recommend they go for help? Well, uh, a couple of places, uh, education.myheritage.com that I already mentioned, and myheritage.com slash help, which is the address of our frequent asked question section, the help section on my heritage. I'm pretty sure everybody will find there all the answers and even a possibility to contact our support department as well. Okay, so I've just pulled those up here in my browser. So I'm going to grab these URLs, put them in your chat area. There's the Help Center. Here comes the Education link, everybody. Um, mm -hmm. I even, Daniel, do you mind if I share this? Uh, here's oh, yeah, that's also a very good suggestion, Jeff. The Facebook uh, user group. Yep. Yeah, so I've just put this link in your chat area as well. So a place to ask questions of other of fourteen point eight thousand other MyHeritage uh, users. And if you want to learn more, oh Daniel, you spoke about endogamy, and so I pulled up this webinar uh, that Paul Woodbury taught uh, at the end of last year. So if you've uh, a couple of you had questions about endogamy, and so I put that link in there as well. And if you want more Daniel Horowitz, just go up to <laughs> the webinar website, and I'll put that link in your chat area right there as well. Uh, there's his beautiful face, and Daniel's coming back uh, in June to talk about smart matches, and we've got a, a fun web, a fun webinar coming up on the new Legacy Family Tree webinars website, and then you can learn from Daniel any time of the day uh, with uh, all of these various topics. And like uh, Daniel, you're, you're going to really enjoy this comment from Stephanie. She says. I actually understand quite a bit more about DNA. Before this explanation from Daniel, I was totally lost. Thanks so much, <laughs> Daniel. I always learn from and enjoy your webinars. You are a great presenter. So uh, thank you, Stephanie, thank you. Thank for Thank you, Stephanie. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you made my day, uh, mm -hmm. really. This is the reason why I do this, uh, just to make sure that you can become better genealogists. Wonderful. I, Daniel, it... it you could feel it in your voice that <laughs> that you really love this and and uh so we thank you for all that you do uh for uh for my heritage and for all of us and and uh, it's fun to be a part of my heritage and and fun to be a part of um things that are that are always so new and groundbreaking i uh be, just before you go daniel i was reading the blog so let me just go up here to blog.myheritage.com. Oh, and I'll put that link in your chat area as well, everybody. And there was a there was an article right here about the the milestone and and of deep nostalgia. And at the very end of it, I think it was the end of this one. Uh, oh, it must have been. I, I watched this video. At the very end of the video, it said, "What will my heritage think of?" next and <clears throat> uh, and isn't that wonderful just to be a part of all of this well uh thanks daniel for being here with pleasure always jeff <laughs> look forward to what you give to us next and thanks for the the sneak peek or the scoop of what's coming um i'm going to now uh let's do some announcements and some door prizes and and again thank thank daniel daniel is uh he's actually scheduled for Webinar number two in just a couple of minutes with uh, a genealogy society. So we had to, we had, uh, we need to say thank you and goodbye to him. Now uh, we'll say welcome to Ofer Carp coming up. Uh, this is our next live webinar in two weeks from today on advanced DNA features on my heritage, and he is the one to uh, learn from definitely. So. Uh, I hope to see you there. Just register for it, and we'll send you a link to join, just like we did here. Um, we'll, our first door prize here will be a one-year MyHeritage Complete plan, so that will uh, that will give you everything that MyHeritage has to offer, including the new deep nostalgia, the new uh, colorize your photos from the black and white photos, 
um, the trees, the unlimited access to all of the records, and so much more up there. So if you're here, you're eligible to win. You don't need to do anything special. Um, I'm, I'll just, I've got a random door prize picker here, and it has chosen Peggy Wesh. Congratulations to you. Just watch for an email from me, Peggy. And we're going to do a MyHeritage DNA test kit. If I call your name on this, just send me your mailing address and phone number, and we'll get this sent out to you. Uh, we'll say congrats to Jim Graham. You're the winner of a MyHeritage DNA test kit. Uh, so congrats to you. And, uh, yeah, we've, we're, we're now beyond the questions part. And so I'd uh, just like to thank all of you so much for being here. Uh, you're welcome, Peggy, who's excited in the chat area over her door prize. Uh, appreciate all of you being here. Um, we'll see you next time. We'll see you in between at, uh, at the individual webinars up at FamilyTreeWebinars.com. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.